WebSwarm 2020.3 is released. Hi, I'm Paul Leverage, JetBrains Developer Advocate. When I first saw the list of what's new, I actually giggled a little bit thinking about this video. So many useful features, things that I can't wait to use myself, and I get to show it to you. Yay me! Let's take a look at what's new in WebStorm 2020.3. Across our IDEs, across the platform, across the company, we have some marching orders. Refine what we have and make it easier to get started. These are some of the things in 2020.3 that stood out to me the most. Let's start with getting started. What's one of the first things people see? The Welcome to WebStorm screen, of course, which also appears when you don't have a project open. We've revamped this across the platform to be more friendly and more useful. As before, you can create a new project, open an existing project. You can clone a project from VCS and open it in WebStorm directly. Nice little touches, for example, uh, if you have a long list of projects that you've created in the past, you can speed search to limit them a little bit. We've added some tabs over here to organize some of the features that were available before, customize to get into IDE settings, plugins to go install new IntelliJ platform add-ons and plugins. We've also added a tab called Learn WebStorm with links to help videos and our new interactive training course. Desktop operating systems have themes and people switch between them. In 2020.3, Windows and macOS users can set up WebStorm to synchronize its theme settings when the desktop theme changes. For example, I have my desktop set up to use a light theme in macOS. You can see from the color of the menu bar. And in WebStorm's preferences or settings, you can go to Appearance and Behavior Appearance, and this checkbox, Sync with OS, when you check it, gives you a drop down to say, when the desktop theme is light, use this WebStorm theme. When the desktop theme is dark, use this WebStorm theme. Here's an example of refining an existing feature. People use tabs to keep multiple files open at once. People then split windows to have multiple files visible at once. But doing so isn't, well, so visible. In 2020.3, you can split the editor in the layout you want by drag and drop with the mouse. For example, I can drag this over to the side and open it on the right. I can go further, I can take another file and I can drag it to the bottom and split this one. So I now have a kind of a three pane layout. The inverse is also true. I can go backwards and get rid of the splitting by dragging and putting back in the tab and same one for this and go back to having just one pane visible at once. One last feature for making life with tabs easier, pen tabs now show a special icon. If I have this tab as pinned, it will indicate that it's pinned with a little push pin icon. And if I want to go a little further and have my pinned tabs on a row by themselves, there's a preference for that. And I can select it by deselecting show tabs on one row and then selecting show pin tabs in a separate row. When I go back to the IDE, I see I've got one row for pin tabs and one row for regular tabs. That's not all for look and feel refinements. You can now make WebStorm the default app for opening specific file types. Custom file templates that create several files at once, for example, when adding a JS file and a test that goes with it. Going through huge library files can be cumbersome, so we implemented a new reader mode. Oh, the WebStorm team always staying up with the latest in JavaScript and web frameworks and technologies. Not easy for 2020.3. Some big features, some nice refinements. Let's take a peek. You know what's hot? Tailwind CSS. You make one mention, the tweet blows up. We listen, and 2020.3 includes long-awaited support for Tailwind. In a CSS file, once I use the apply directive, I get auto completion of Tailwind classes, for example, bg green 400. Curious about what that generated? I can just mouse over it and get a preview. 
The same works for class attributes in HTML. Let's take a look at how to use a pseudo class, for example, hover. And then we'll say font bold and let it expand. Same thing applies for the seeing what it generates. Now let's say I add a customization, a Tailwind customization in the tailwind.config.js file. Uh, for example, I've added a new color called spacer and I can go back to my CSS and I can autocomplete on that as well. So for example, I can select enter to accept it. And yes, hovering also works to get a preview of what will be generated for the CSS for this. I love the little refinements that improve stuff I do all the time. In React, life is about extracting components, which WebStorm is automated for JavaScript. But what about starting from JSX? 2020.3 has this. Let's say I'm writing a parent component and my cursor is on top of a place where I need a child component. I can make that child component, for example, subheading, and now use the all-purpose, wonderful, phenomenal Alt-Enter and let it generate the subcomponent for me. It will do so, and then I can do all the normal stuff. I could come up here and say children and then return, uh, for example, header and the children. All the normal stuff that you would expect to do when writing this by hand is now implemented in 2020.3 from JSX. We previously supported that in extracting a component from JavaScript. I could go one step further with what we usually do in, um, in single file, single responsibility principle, putting stuff in a file and use the support that was there previously to make a new file called subheading. And then it will create that new file, ask me to add it to version control, go back to where it was used, and it generated the import for me. WebStorm 2020.3 has other improvements in our framework support. For example, enhancements and fixes to the big stuff we did earlier for Vue 3. Reformatting diagrams and more for Markdown. Basic support for multiple Webpack configs and full PNPM support. Well, one thing's for sure, the world of JavaScript and TypeScript doesn't sit still, and neither does WebStorm. Let's look at two nice refinements plus some other improvements. Disclaimer, one of these segments has shameless gushing by yours truly. Previous releases introduced the problems tool window with its little widget up here, which showed errors and warnings in the current file TypeScript problems, though, were in a different tool window. In 2020.3, the problems tool window now has the TypeScript language service integrated into it in the project errors tab. Uh, to access the buttons that were previously available in the TypeScript tool window, we also have a widget down in the status bar, which lets you get to some of those functions. So for example, in the uh, project errors I have on um, TypeScript, I see that I've got a problem in this TSX file. And for example, if I was over in index.tsx, which has a warning, not a problem, if I had this open, I could jump directly to the file with that problem in it uh, on the line where the problem is and get a little bit more information without having to go over to it. I have an irrational love of this 2020.3 feature. This one's going to take a while, sorry. Inline hints and watches in the debugger. I have a test of a component. I run the test. I'm working all night, really tired. This test continues to fail when I run it under just this assertion is going to fail. And because I'm tired, I, I keep staring at it. Time for the debugger. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to set a breakpoint, run this test under the debugger. I'm going to minimize the project tool window to give myself a little bit more space. And it's going to stop execution on this line. And when it does, I see something that was in 20, 20, earlier releases, 2020.2 and before. The debugger shows these kind of like comments at the end of the line. These are inline hints. They're not actually part of the document. But in 2020.3, I can actually interact with these comments, with these inline hints. 
I can walk up to it, I can click on it and see some more information about the object structure. And even on this inline hint, when I click on it, you see that I get a little visual indication that it's clickable when I mouse over it, when I hover. When I click on it, you know, maybe on this one, I want to set the value and change the value to, to, for the rest of the execution context. So that's pretty useful. What I'd also like to be able to do, though, is set a watch on this tag name, perhaps as part of an expression. Um, and so what I would do in the past is I'd have to come down here and I would have to add a watch. And maybe I'm going to say link element tag name is A, which is the problem that I'm having. And it evaluates the false, and that's great. But I had to change my mental context from the editor down to the debugger's variables tool window. So that's one problem. Second problem is once I leave this scope, I get yelled at by the debugger telling me, you got a problem, you got a problem. And that's going to be there, it's going to be there, it's going to be there. It's a little bit annoying. And one last little problem is if I deleted these lines for some reason, this would still be here. This watch would still be here. It would be orphaned from any code, constantly yelling at me, a little bit of a problem. What have we done in 2020.3 to make this better? I will go ahead and continue running on this and then put us back into that context. What we've done in 2020.3 is inline watches. We improved these inline hints but we're also going to have an inline watch. So for example, I will walk up to maybe this line, and when I click on it, I can add it as an inline watch. I could do inline watches, I can add them in other ways, for example, selecting an expression, right-clicking on it, add inline watch. And when I do, I see this value here, I could, for example, delete it, come back to here, do it the other way, add as an inline watch to stay in the editor. I'm gonna say that it's A, hit enter, and I see the evaluation of this inline watch. It's inline, which is really cool. I have to switch context to some other tool window. I can interact with it, for example, by clicking it to edit it, or clicking X to get rid of that watch expression. And it's connected to the code. So if I deleted that line of code, it would delete the watch as well. I wouldn't have that orphan watch problem. And then finally, as I step out of this, I don't have anything yelling at me anymore saying that this is no longer valid because the context is wrong. One last point on where this is leading, and as someone who uses a debugger a lot, especially during testing, this is a pretty good benefit. Because I get, and I'll rerun the debugger and stop on that line, because I get all of this information in the editor now, where I get uh, inline hints to show me the state of things and allow me to edit the state of things and inline watches to help me focus on the problem, I can actually go a step further, get a lot more screen real estate and turn off the debugger tool window. Based on our surveys, our version control integration is one of the most popular platform features. Those folks have been busy this year and 2020.3 has a few notable changes. If you're using the new commit tool window that we introduced earlier this year, you can enable support for Git staging. This is the new com uh, commit tool window. It currently shows our support for VCS change lists which is what you have by default, you can switch away from change lists and instead start using Git staging via preferences. So I'm in the version control Git preferences. I can enable this checkbox. And when I do, change lists disappear and I get staged and unstaged to use Git terminology. In these unstaged, I have two files that are unstaged. And when I mouse over them, when I hover over them, I get a plus. I can add them to the staged area using that plus. I can remove them from the staged area using that plus. I can also do individual changes, open up a diff view, and I can go to this change and stage just this change instead of the entire file as part of the commit. That's not all for 2020.3 and our VCS improvements. The VCS menu got some tidying up and rearranging. We also made some improvements for working with branches. One thing you gotta say about IDEs, 
pretty good at navigating through a project. 2020.3 has a few navigation features plus a refinement that I quite like. I keep saying, here's a feature that I'm irrationally excited about. Well, here's another one because it's a subtle refinement. In previous releases, we had the navigation bar up here. It lets you get up and down the file system. And we had breadcrumbs down here, which let you navigate within a document through symbols. We've combined this in 2020.3. The navigation bar now continues past the document down through the symbols on the way to the location of the cursor. So you can use it like you would breadcrumbs. You can also use it like you would the structure menu. If I want to see all the symbols at the top level of this document, don't need the structure tool. I can just click here. We have some other navigation improvements in WebStorm 2020.3. For example, search everywhere got even more powerful. Look at that, you can do math. Next, preview tabs let you view content before editing. That's a lot for one release, but there's still a few more highlights to mention. Code With Me, our collaborative editing tool, is now in EAP. You can add the plugin and use it from WebStorm. The welcome screen includes a built-in training course for using WebStorm. Our HTTP client tool supports conversion from the popular curl program. And finally, better spelling and grammar checking from our bundled tool. That's what's new in WebStorm 2020.3. Big new features such as the Tailwind support, lots of useful everyday refinements from the welcome screen all the way to debugging. The team worked really hard. We hope you enjoy this final major release for 2020. And thanks for watching this video.